On a remote peninsula in Russia, a team of scientists from the Soviet Union spent decades drilling down toward the center of the Earth. They dug through endless sheets of rock, cementing their place in the history books as they went. And when these intrepid researchers reached over 40,000 feet deep, they celebrated an unheard of milestone. The deepest hole in the Earth. But after decades of digging, another history-making discovery forced them to shut down their machines for good. Scientists found something extraordinary on their way to the center of the Earth. Shockingly, some believe that our knowledge of space is now greater than our understanding of what exists beneath Earth's surface. And while many people know about the space race that gripped the United States and the USSR during the Cold War, few remember the equally fascinating battle to conquer our subterranean world. Beginning in the late 1950s, competing teams of American and Soviet scientists began digging as far into the Earth's crust as they possibly could. If you're wondering what exactly was so compelling about dirt and rocks, the answer lies miles and miles beneath the Earth's surface. Though it may not hold the same mystique as the cosmos, the Earth's crust is not as boring as you'd think. Thought to stretch as far as 30 miles towards the center of our planet, this dense shell eventually gives way to the mantle, the mysterious inner layer that makes up a staggering 40% of our planet's mass. Yet the deepest ever man made hole up until this point was miles short of the mantle. This wasn't going to stop adventurous 1950s scientists, though. If they could send a satellite to space, they could dig to the center of the Earth. In fact, it was the Soviet Union successfully launching Sputnik 1 into orbit on October 4, 1957, that lit a fire under American scientists. The Americans had seemingly fallen behind the Soviets in the space race, a situation that the creation of NASA in 1958 would soon put right. But it wasn't enough for the US to beat the Soviets into space, the country needed to beat them on all fronts. And as drilling a hole into the Earth's crust represented a path different from space, the government was quick to get on board with a groundbreaking project in Earth sciences. So, in 1958, the U.S. took the lead in the digging race, with the launch of Project Mohole. Located near Guadalupe in Mexico, the operation saw a team of engineers drill through the bed of the Pacific Ocean, to a depth of over 600 feet. The project was lauded in the press, with Life magazine even commissioning John Steinbeck to write breathless articles about it. The fanfare led to a $40 million investment but not much else. Eight years after its founding, its funding was cut, and Project Mohol was abandoned. The Americans never got to the mantle. Next, it was the Soviets' turn. On May 24, 1970, a team of researchers began drilling down into the earth below the Pechensky district, a sparsely populated region on Russia's Kola Peninsula. Their goal was simple. To penetrate as far as possible into the planet's crust. If we have a better knowledge of what the mantle is and how the mantle behaves, we have better knowledge of volcanoes and earthquakes and better knowledge of how the planet as a whole works," explained Benjamin Andrews to the Smithsonian Magazine in 2015. So the Soviets didn't want to dig a measly 600 feet like the Americans. The Soviets aimed to reach a depth of some 49,000 feet under Earth's surface. So, using specialist equipment, researchers began to dig a series of boreholes forking off from a single principal cavity. That main cavity known as the Kola Superdeep Borehole was actually only 9 inches in diameter. The drilling rig the scientists first used was called the Uralmashfori, and it got to work on May 24, 1970. But while the rig slowly made its way down through the earth, prospectors in America had made some progress of their own. In 1974 the Lone Star Producing Company was drilling for oil in Washita County in Oklahoma. In the process, the firm created the Bertha Rogers Hole, a man-made marvel that reached over 31,400 feet, or nearly 6 miles, below the surface of the Earth. It broke ground on October 25, 1972, and continued to dig for some 18 months before it hit its endpoint. Clearly, the Americans weren't giving up the rock race without a fight. Lone Star never found what it was looking for, but its effort produced what was the deepest hole on the planet for five years. Then, on June 6, 1979, one of the Kola boreholes, dubbed SG-3, smashed the record. The drilling rig used to create this hole was the Uralmash 15000, 
the number signaling the team's ultimate goal of reaching 15,000 meters down. If you're wondering why the team couldn't just drill straight down to the Earth's center like they do in cartoons the biggest problem is the heat. It gets hotter the closest to the Earth's core you get, and that heat is deadly to the equipment. Yet in 1983, the hole traveled a staggering 39,000 feet into Earth's crust. With this milestone achieved, researchers on the Kola Peninsula temporarily downed tools. For 12 months, they paused work on the borehole so that various people could visit the fascinating site. This included delegates from the International Geological Congress, visits from government officials interested in seeing the actual drill that penetrated the earth, and the making of celebratory stamps. However, when the experiment was restarted the following year, a technical problem forced drilling to grind to a halt. Some have argued that the prolonged break may have contributed to this failure. It turned out that the walls in the hole had changed in the time when they had stopped drilling. So when the team began to drill once more, the drill actually got stuck and jammed the hole. Not to be defeated, the researchers abandoned the previous borehole and began again from a depth of 23,000 feet. And in 1989, the drilling reached a record 40,230 feet deep or an incredible 7.5 miles. Encouraged, those involved in the project were optimistic about the future, believing that the hole would pass 44,000 feet in late 1990. Even more impressively, it was predicted that the borehole would reach its target of 49,000 feet as early as 1993. But something unexpected was lurking beneath the remote Russian tundra. And bizarrely, as the drill inched closer and closer to Earth's center, a complete change occurred. For the first 10,000 feet, temperatures inside the borehole had more or less adhered to what the researchers had expected to find. However, after that depth, the level of heat shot up much faster. The heat would create all kinds of problems for the machinery. The drill would even begin to change shape because of the intense conditions. The hole itself became harder and harder to bore, too, because the heat would make the walls more liquid. One researcher compared it to trying to make a permanent hole in a hot bowl of soup. And by the time the drilling neared its target, the hole had heated up to a whopping 180 degrees centigrade, 356 degrees Fahrenheit, a full 80 degrees centigrade, 176 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than anticipated. That wasn't all. The researchers discovered that the rock at these depths was far less dense than they had imagined. As a result, it reacted to the higher temperatures in strange and unpredictable ways. For one, the rock took on an almost plastic texture, which made drilling nearly impossible. Despite having drilled thousands of feet into the past, the researchers knew their drilling journey to the center of the earth was over. Their equipment would not last with the plastic-like rock and extreme heat, so the team at Kola abandoned the project. This was in 1992 22 years after drilling had first begun. That doesn't mean the mission was a bust, however. Researchers were able to learn some fascinating things before sealing up the Kola Superdeep borehole. For example, at some four miles deep, they discovered tiny fossils of marine plants. These relics were remarkably intact, given how long they had spent encased below several miles of rock that itself was thought to be over two billion years old. We thought of it as an expedition because it really took some time in terms of preparation and execution," Yuli Harms told the BBC. Harms was a scientist on a rival German drilling team called the German Continental Deep Drilling Program. Because you're really going into no man's land, where no one has been before, and that is really unusual today," she said. You always find down there something that really surprises you, especially if you go down into an area that is very deep in the crust. An even more exciting discovery was made at the farthest reaches of the Kola Superdeep borehole, though. By measuring seismic waves, experts had previously predicted that the rock under our feet shifts from granite to basalt at around 2 to 4 miles beneath the surface. However, they soon found that this was not the case at least not on the Kola Peninsula. Instead, researchers found only granite, even at the deepest point of the borehole. They didn't see that coming. This discovery helped them learn that the change in seismic waves was the result of metamorphic differences in the rock, rather than a shift to basalt. But their most staggering discovery was when they stumbled upon flowing water several miles beneath the Earth's surface. 
it had been thought that water would naturally evaporate at such high temperatures. This discovery forced many scientists to throw out older models of the Earth's core and embrace an unthought of new theory. But while some enthusiastic commenters have jumped on this discovery of subterranean water as proof of biblical floods, this phenomenon is now believed instead to be the result of strong pressure forcing oxygen and hydrogen atoms out of the rock. Afterward, impermeable rocks caused the newly formed water to become trapped beneath the surface. Other unexpected finds way down in the hole included microscopic plankton fossils discovered 3.5 miles down and a rather large amount of hydrogen gas. But it wasn't long before the whole thing was shut down. The timing of the Kola Superdeep Borehole's closure coincided with the fall of the Soviet Union, and in 1995 the project was permanently shut down. Today, then, the site is flagged as an environmental hazard, although visitors can still see some interesting relics from the experiment. In the nearby town of Zapolyarny some six miles away from the Kola Superdeep borehole, people can still see remnants from the experiment, including the boreholes, which have been welded shut. And, impressively, researchers have yet to beat its record, meaning the borehole remains the planet's deepest man-made point. While it still holds the record for the deepest man-made vertical hole in existence, the Al Shaheen oil well in Qatar is the longest borehole at an impressive 40,318 feet. And now a group from China may give both of these holes a run for their money. On June 6, 2023, China began drilling a hole with a planned depth of 11,100 meters just shy of Kola's total. But this team thinks they can get it done in 457 days. So while humans haven't made it to the center of the Earth yet, some brave explorers have made some headway by embarking on truly daring expeditions hundreds of feet below the Earth's surface. In 2019 six explorers packed their gear and headed to southern New Mexico, home to the Carlsbad Caverns. Max Wissack, Sean Thomas, Hazel Barton, Beth Courtright, Andy Armstrong, and James Hunter had devised an exploration plan and presented it to the Carlsbad Caverns National Park's Cave Resources Office. The office approved, and the exploration was on. Wissack and his team knew the stakes of their mission. One of the most famous cavern systems in the U.S., Carlsbad Caverns National Park, spans 70 square miles and contains more than 80 caves. The system was created 250 million years ago when enormous marine predators dominated the ever-changing planet. Native peoples first discovered the caves. Before colonizers forced indigenous peoples off their lands, the Zuni Pueblo and Mescalero Apaches were exploring the Carlsbad Caverns themselves. Once the tribes were gone, the caves were forgotten for years who knows what happened after all those years. Once Carlsbad was rediscovered, photographer Ray V. David helped popularize the system in 1923. His pictures of the caverns excited the government, and they declared it a national monument that same year. Seven years later, the system was designated as a national park. With the park protected by bureaucracy, even fewer explorers were allowed inside. Soon, the cave was just another attraction. Tourists flocked to see the Bat Cave. Every summer, millions of bats fly in and out of the cave's mouth. The cave myosis and fringed myosis bats roost deep in the cave and then fly 1.5 miles to the exit. In total, there are 17 different bat species that call the park home. Wissack and his team, though, weren't interested in bats. One of the spots that fascinated Wissack and his crew was the Lechagilla Cave. This cave is the second deepest in the continental U.S. and the eighth longest explored cave in the world, but this wasn't discovered until 1984. The first modern group to make their way down started in the 50s. They encountered something almost supernatural. This group found a bunch of tunnels with dead ends. Eventually, they reached what they thought was the end of the cavern and were hit with a blast of wind deep underground. They couldn't find the source, even though they heard the wind whistling in from somewhere. No one else explored Lechagilla until 1984. A Colorado caving team obtained permission from the National Park Service to see if they could discover more of the mysteries hidden below. Their work led to 150 miles of passages and chambers being added to the official Lechagilla maps. The caves didn't just interest scientists, in 2002 journalist Michael Taylor decided he wanted to see what was in Lechagilla himself. 
For the PBS show Nova, Michael and a team of Spellinkers took their own trip into the cave. From Michael's account, it was a rough journey. We lay 1,200 feet, more or less, beneath the desert, down countless rope pitches and miles of tortuous passage from the single entrance to Lechagilla Cave, Michael wrote. The cave's constant humidity, which had kept us sweating for hours as we made our difficult way down, now leached away warmth. He added, we stank of the day's work, our funk blending with Lech's peculiar soil and metal odor. My bare arms and legs were caked with soil, sweat, and blood from inevitable encounters with sharp rocks, along with gritty bits of white aragonite that we had acquired while squeezing through a tight formation line tube. These accounts were well studied by Max Wissack and his crew. But the call for exploration was too strong. There were over 250,000 years of history to the Carlsbad Caverns, and very few people so far had ventured deep enough into the twisting caverns and passageways. There was a real possibility to discover something never seen by humans good or bad. One geologic feature that stood in the team's way was the Lake of Liquid Sky. We absolutely loved the feeling of mystery the name brings. Humans had located the underground pool since 1993 and the 2019 team wasn't allowed to let the liquid graze their skin. Max and the rest of the cavers wore safety suits to keep the liquid from reaching them as they crossed the 50 feet of water. Luckily, it was only 5 feet at its deepest point. Once they made it through the water, they saw 350 feet of spacious and highly decorated passage. The scientists sketched the passages to keep track of them, along with recording them on distox. This is a handheld device that looks like an old Palm Pilot used to digitally map the cave passages. With their distocks and old-fashioned pen and paper, they tracked their findings. There were rare minerals hiding on the other side of the Lake of Liquid Sky. They didn't see any dragons guarding the yellow and blue barite crystals, which seems surprising on some level. The barite, of course, had to inspire the newly explored region. Barite Boulevard. The Kansas City Star went wild over the researchers' work. In June 2020, a reporter wrote that the team stumbled upon a pool surrounded by white frosted rock and filled with an odd-looking liquid that resembles thick lime yogurt. That description was oddly very accurate. Rodney Horrocks, the chief of natural and cultural resources at Carlsbad Caverns National Park, gave credence to the yogurt quote. This pool has been isolated for hundreds of thousands of years and had never seen light before that day, Rodney said. The yogurt pool drew plenty of interest from newspaper readers. Max eventually jumped in to clarify that his team didn't wade through lime yogurt, the cave's odd lighting cast a green tint on the water, which was actually crystal clear. The white frosted rock was really white barite crystals. The reason they couldn't touch the water didn't have anything to do with it being dangerous. Such untouched pools are scientifically important because water samples are relatively free of contaminants, and the microbial organisms that may live in those pools are only those that belong there," Max wrote. The environment was so specialized that the scientists could have accidentally thrown off the ecosystem. Max wanted to completely ensure audiences understood that a newly discovered pool in Lechagilla Cave is about as pristine as it gets. In total, they spent eight full days underground and examined 4,000 new feet of passages. Slowly but surely, we're beginning to better understand what's deep underground. And those discoveries range from intriguing to terrifying. In 2016 this voodoo doll-like sculpture was found inside a cave in the Catskill Mountains. The hikers that found it reportedly felt strange supernatural energy when they got close. They snapped a photo and posted it to Reddit with the hope of someone knowing what it was. To this day, it remains a mystery. Yet at one point, many caves throughout the world housed ancient civilizations, and this handprint artwork proves it. Discovered in an Argentinian cave, the humans who lived here created this art using red chalk powder. Amazingly, scientists determined this primitive painting to be 9,500 to 13,000 years old, Roughly 500,000 years ago, a river carved out this cave in China. Known as the Reed Flute Cave, the unique rock formations here reflect shades of blue and purple light all over the interior walls. And, for all you history buffs, during World War II, Chinese soldiers actually used it as an air raid shelter. 
and in the 60s, 400 massive footprints were found in Romania's Zaire Izbic cave. Thanks to radiocarbon measurements, scientists determined that Homo sapiens left them over 35,000 years ago. New Zealand is already one of the most gorgeous countries on the planet, but this cave, located in Witomo, may just put it at the very top of the beauty list. Visitors take kayaks through the 30-million-year-old cavern to gawk at thousands of phosphorescent worms dangling off the walls. It's like experiencing the universe underground. Elsewhere, deep in the caves of Slovenia and Croatia, lives this vibrantly colored amphibian known as the Olm Salamander. This bizarre little chap is completely blind and uses something called electrosensation to effectively explore its surroundings. Even more bizarre is the fact that although it's an amphibian, the Olm salamander also has gills that allow it to survive completely underwater. One of the most mysterious and well-preserved caves in the world is located in Cornwall, England. Dating back to 500 BC, visitors have emerged with bizarre stories of strange light movements, odd sounds, and life-changing visions that rivaled those of ancient religious texts. The mineral-rich water is what creates the stalagmites and stalactites we see so often in caves. But, the water is also the cause of these cave pearls. The calcite laden liquid drips from the cave ceilings onto the dirt below, and over time the clumps solidify into smooth round rocks. A team of construction workers making their way into a Brazilian cave was unexpectedly greeted by this behemoth reptile. At 33 feet long, this snake was the longest ever found. It beat out the previous record holder a snake named Medusa from Kansas City, Missouri by nearly 10 feet. Medusa was once measured at 25 feet 2 inches, which made her the longest snake in captivity. She also weighed around 350 pounds. Guinness World Records even said that it took 10 people just to hold her for measuring. These enormous crystalline structures were found in a cave in Nica, Mexico. Besides the crystals themselves being an incredible find, the scientists who explored the area also discovered thriving life. Samples of bacteria were apparently living off the iron and magnesium present in the structures, which led the team to believe that life may be able to flourish in conditions way tougher than previously thought. In the ocean surrounding the Bahamas, meanwhile, there are a number of dark blue circles that lead deep underwater. The dark shade of blue is due to the entrances trapping light and reflecting it back into the surrounding water. At first glance, the structure in this photo almost looks like it could be a human that turned to stone as they were gazing out across the water. It's just a stalactite, of course, but the Gita Grotto in Lebanon holds the longest in the world at 27 feet. Another interesting fact about caves. Because of the pitch black darkness that most cave creatures live in, evolution has given them some very unique traits. Many of the fish, for example, are completely blind, but they have the ability to sense even the slightest pressure changes in water through their central nervous systems. Scientists in Indonesia were awed when they came across a cave that once housed a new and incredibly tiny species of humans. Standing at only three feet tall, the Homo floresiensis were almost like ancient hobbits. It's a mystery as to why they died out, but fingers might just point to an ancient sarin. And another famous discovery came in a cave located in Israel's Judean desert that was apparently home to the Dead Sea Scrolls. Unfortunately, researchers believe someone stole the scrolls long ago, though the cave still contained manuscripts written on papyrus and animal skin that dated back to the 4th century BC when it was discovered. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.